Well, this has been sitting around since midsummer. Let's see if it'll run. Oh, kicked on the third pole. That's a good little runner there. That's all there is to it. Hi folks and welcome to this episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. I've started a new channel that's a little different from the channel you're watching right now. It's called RM3D Creations. RM3D Space Creations. And it's going to be about outboard stuff still and creating other stuff. So I want to point you to that channel. I'd love for everybody that's subscribed and supported me on this channel so far. To, I'll have a link in the, to the first video down below that I've released just today. And I say today, by, the, by weeks from now, it won't be today anymore. But you go to the link, you'll see my introductory video. I am getting into the world of 3D printing. And why you ask? Well, there are plastic parts. There's choke knobs. There's linkages. There's uh, pull handles. There's a lot of different stuff on these outboards that are 50 years old that are plastic that are breaking. And you can no longer find them anymore. So I want to in, dive into the endeavor of redesigning, possibly make them better than they were they went, when they were new, plus the plastic's obviously going to be brand new, and offer them up to the general public to purchase from me. It is, uh, I think it's a, a something, well, I need it. Look at, well, I, I'm in a sea of outboards here, and they all need something. They're here because somebody gave them up, and they let them sit too long, or they broke something and don't want to fix it, or the marina... A dealer, outboard dealer, told them it's going to cost more to fix it than it's worth. Nine times out of ten, that is true. Because by the time you pay labor rates and whatnot, it's going to cost a fortune to fix these things. But my, this channel here that we've been watching is focused on teaching you how to do some of this stuff yourself. So you can be an educated and informed person when you go into the dealer to get something fixed. And or you may just forego the dealer all this, altogether and fix it yourself. Uh, I've got, I'm starting to gain quite a few uh, informative videos. Uh, just do a search through my channel. Chances are I might have a motor that you have that you want to get running again. But, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to push all my subscribers, all the people that's been really good to me, that's leaving all kinds of great comments to the RM3D Creations channel. I want to get that one going. I've released the first video today. It's an unboxing video on a 3D printer. And the first prints that I did on the 3D printer. From that point, we're going to take this to a whole new level. We're going to do some design work. Uh, I've got some CAD software that we're going to draw some of these parts. We're going to reverse engineer these parts, recreate them, and, and apply them onto the motors. And we're going to show you how well they work. And I might make some improvements. Some of these knobs feel kind of small in your hand. Uh, we're giant people out here in the world, and we don't need these little tiny ass knobs. We need knobs that you can grab a hold of and turn. We have knobs that you'll be able to visually see where you're at, different things like that. So I'm not just going to copy what's there. I'm going to copy and improve what's there is the plan on that channel. Uh, so I encourage you to, sh I'm going to also feature stuff like that on this channel as well. But it's going to be, uh, you'll see the parts in action. The other channel will be all about the, uh, the need, the development, the creation, the application. And we're going to go from there. So I, I, Bring, I want to bring you along on this journey with me. And you guys can be there from the word go. All my current subscribers can jump over there, subscribe. You'll get notifications then when I release a video on that channel as well. Believe you me, this is going to keep going. I'm in a sea of outboards here. I've got content for days going on out here to keep me going all winter and to keep you guys in the outboard uh, repair world and, and just stay in touch with it all winter because... What do we do when we can't go out and do? We watch what we love to do. People that can't go fish, 
will watch fishing. People that can't go golfing will watch golfing. That's what this is all about as well. We can't get out there and run our motors because the water is too hard when it's 30 below zero. We can come inside here and we can watch some motors run. Like you just saw there, I've got a great little six horse that I worked on earlier this summer. And I wanna talk about that a little bit now. Uh, if you have an outboard and you're gonna let it sit around for a long period of time, it's no different than a car or any other motorized or mechanical device. If it sits around too long, it will start to decay. Or seals start to go bad, things start to rust, and all that kind of thing. Uh, the outboards are no different. Outboards are no different. You wanna exercise these things occasionally. Uh, you might have a wall hanger that you hang on the wall for two years and go, oh, that thing will just go and run. Well, maybe not. Maybe you've got uh, seals that have corroded since then. You've got things that have gummed up since then. Uh, you got points or ignition systems that have went bad because of rust or decay or, uh, and, and uh, what is that called? Uh, oxidation, aluminum, a lot of aluminum in these motors, they oxidize. So, and that's why I've got this test tank here and I thought, well, I haven't ridden this Evan route and I'll put, the, I'll put it down below right here. Somewhere in here. Let me see if I can fit it right here. Uh, how many months it's been since I ran that little six horse Evan Root Fisherman? Uh, it's a great little motor. As you saw there, it didn't take much to pull start and get it going. Uh, it is ready for the water anytime. But I thought, well, I'll just throw it in the tank. We're gonna let it run for 10 or 15 minutes, just get it warmed up and, and make sure it still functions like it, like it should and, and just exercise it. Now, the other option you have if you're not gonna run it for a long period of time is to winterize it. And that's doing some fogging oil, some changing the oil, some wiping down the motor, some greasing, all that kind of stuff, your regular maintenance stuff you should do before you let it sit for a long period of time. So when you pull it out and go to use it, it's fresh. Uh, but we're all guilty of it. We've had it happen where we've used something, left it there, life gets in the way, and it sits and sits and sits. And next thing you know, it's been two to three years and it hasn't been run. And now you want to go out and use it and realize it doesn't work well. And now you gotta go and take it to some place to get it fixed. Well, that's why we're here, why I'm here on this channel, and I've been focusing a lot on outboards. I do a lot of boat stuff in general uh, since I started this channel, but I've been really concentrating on outboard motors. And uh, somebody I left a comment the other day, How, what's the biggest outboard you've worked on so far? Outboard-wise, it's a 35 horse. You can, you can see it on this channel right here. It was posted just a, a couple weeks ago. Uh, that's the biggest one I've got. I've got 18 horse all the way down to the four horse uh, Mercury that I played around with. I've got several things in the works right now. I'm, I still owe you guys results, a result video on the old 9.9 .9 with the big secret, what went wrong, why it died. We're gonna get to that one. We've got an 18 horse fast twin that we're gonna do an engine block swap on because the, the only motor I've ever dropped in the tank and never tested first, uh, actually ran good, but has a weak cylinder. It has 100 pounds on one cylinder, 70 in the other. And thanks to my good buddy, Badger Bob, up in, uh, let's just call it middle of the United States, uh, donated me some parts and lo and behold, I researched the parts and they are 18 horse 1968 fast twin parts as well. And it's got a great block with 110 pound compressions on both cylinder. We're gonna do an engine swap. We're gonna bring that Evan Rude back to his glory days. But that's what I love doing here. Doing here, I like to give these things a new life. And that's why the RM3D Creations is gonna help me bring these motors back to life by being able to uh, create and share with you how to create some of these parts. Uh, you can eventually buy these parts from me or you can make them yourself. Follow along. Learn, learn the skills that I'm learning and follow along and make them yourself. Uh, I'll share with you what I can. So without, without further ado, folks, jump over to the RM3D Creations. Take a good look. That video is an hour long. The first video, the introductory video is an hour long. So plan ahead for it if you want to. Get that for your favorite liquid libation, your beverage out, and pop you a, a bucket of popcorn and sit down and just give it a good watch. And if you don't like it, that's fine. If it's not you, if this, what I do on this channel is more you, just stay here. Uh, that's fine. You can, you can subscribe. Obviously, you can subscribe to as many channels as you want. But I encourage you to you know, look at that one every now and then if you want to and just see what I've got going on. Uh, give me some thumbs up. That helps put uh, pump things along a little quicker for me. I appreciate that as well. But uh, like I said, it, I've got a lot of good, good positive uh, feedback, uh, good comments from all my great fans out there that are watching this channel. I much appreciate that. I can't say thank you enough. I know I usually reply in the comments and I say thank you for watching. Thank you for your comments and thanks for your great ideas and tips. But 
you know, it's, it's, it's rewarding for me. I enjoy it and I want to give as much back as I can, uh, when I can, uh, in the, in, in the, in the way of knowledge, in the way of possibly some prizes here and there. Uh, the channel is growing, it's starting to get some good traction and I appreciate it. And that's all due to you guys out there enjoying what I'm doing. I know this is an all talking video. I can't have a video. I'm having trouble having a video that I don't make a motor run. I've had a few of those where we're part one and part two and part three into these, into these fixes. We do see them run. That's the whole idea behind this test tank is I got to keep motors running all winter because you guys love to hear motors run like I do. I really feel, I really feel that from you. And, uh, and, and I'll, I'll, sometimes the older motors are better. Some of the classics are better. Uh, you know, getting a 2015 motor running again, whoop de doo uh, it shouldn't have, it, you shouldn't have had to not get it running again. It should just run. It's only five years old, for goodness sakes. But keeping these 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60 year old motors I've got laying around here, get them up and running is an awesome thing to do. It's rewarding. And I think you guys enjoy that as well. And I encourage you guys to go, go carousing through Facebook Marketplace and see what you can find. That's where I found all these motors that you have here through Facebook Marketplace. It's a great place to search your area locally. Uh, there's people that's got good deals. There's people right now, this is the best time of year to buy a motor because nobody's really, uh, there's not a lot of price wars going on and not a lot of demand for an outboard motor that doesn't run in December. So now's the time to get, get yourself out there and get your hold of some. Uh, and then work on them all winter. And then if you do a little test tank like I did, you can uh, run them and uh, when you get that boat picked up in the spring, a little John boat or something, you're going to be ready to hit the water with, with a reliable motor that you, with your own hands, made run. And there's a ton of reward in that, folks. A ton of reward. So let's jump back over here to this Evan Rude. Let's fire it back up. And we're going to let it run for a little bit. But it, uh, that little Evan Rude, it ain't a fast one. We had it on the little Sea Nymph. It'll do six miles an hour. It's a six horse, and it'll do six miles an hour, whether it's just me in it or my son in it, my son and I in it together. And we're a couple of pretty hefty beefcakes uh, sitting in that boat. And uh, I stole the beefcake thing from Flair. I'm a fan of his, I watch a lot of his stuff, but uh, he's got a bunch of beefcake things he talks about. Uh, calls all of his buddies and his crew beefcakes. Anyway, it'll do it six miles an hour. <laughs> and uh, But it'll do it, honestly, it'll do it all day long. And it's a great little troller. Uh, if you wanna troll along, in the, it, Obviously, between like one and one to two miles an hour, if we're controlling and pulling stuff, it'll do it all day long and just just sit there and hum its song without interruption. So let's go over there and fire it up again. Now it's been about ten minutes since it was running. I shouldn't have to choke it or anything. We're just going to give it the throttle and give it a yank here. Or did it run out of gas? No, well, it shouldn't have. Let's call that a wrap, folks. I appreciate you watching. The intent for this video was to honestly to get you to look at my other channel and see if it's something you're interested in and maybe even subscribe to. But we also got to see your motor run, didn't we? I get just as much enjoyment out of that as you do. Thank you, folks, for watching. Get out there and have some fun. This is Michael, and I'm out.